This is the University of Minnesota, a world-class institution and a key driver of the state's economy. This is an ordinary childcare facility, a local institution that working families rely on for the foundation of their working lives. And the surprising part, it costs more to send a kid here than to the university. Parents can pay upwards of $20,000 per child. And the craziest thing is, most childcare businesses, they struggle to break even. So where's all that money going? We set out to investigate and what we found was a uniquely American problem, decades in the making. And one state, Minnesota, laying the groundwork to fix it. My daughter is two, we pay $1,995 a month. They're not even in school and you're already paying $25,000 a head? Come on, dude, that's just dumber and crap. We pay $1,420 a month. Like my head spinning. How are you guys affording this? I'm gonna do one for this camera. Interview take two, Mark. All right. Do you know offhand how much you charge for infants? We just increased our rates. It's $45 a day. And do you make money providing that care? No. That's Lindsay Bugler. She lives a dual life, a certified public accountant by day and a board member of Lil Sprouts, a nonprofit child care center by night. We're in Warren, Minnesota. Think small town community vibes, about 1,600 people. Families here are, in average, pulling in around $55,000 a year. That's about 20 k less than the national average. And you can't charge the parents enough for us to pay the staff enough. That $45 a day comes out to be $11,000 a year, a whopping 20% of the average family income here, per child. And the thing is, it's kind of affordable relative to the rest of America. In a lot of areas, parents pay double that. Childcare, it's, it's you know, certainly not seen as a high profit industry. No. Like, what, what's your take on that? Uh, it's impossible. It doesn't work from a financial aspect. Families aren't able to afford what we have to charge. So many don't. A lot of childcare centers struggle to break even. Why is childcare so expensive to provide? Ultimately, what it comes down to is the ratios. Lindsay's pointing out government rules on childcare, like limiting how many kids each caregiver can handle. And no sane person wants to get rid of the ratios. Do I think that smaller ratios, less staff, more kids is the answer? No, because then you run into a safety and also a burnout. You know, a person is only capable of taking care of so many children. This is the tricky balance in American childcare, keeping kids safe and running a viable business. It's expensive to do the first, making the latter nearly impossible. Imagine a childcare center's budget is $100. Around 70 of that goes to staff. Why? The ratios. The rest, that's for building supplies and administration. This is the tightrope that they walk. Now, they can't charge more because folks, they can't afford it. So to make a profit, they have to cut expenses. But that's hard. Supplies, climbing. Real estate, it needs to be very specific and specialized for safety. And the workers, they're already earning the bare minimum. The economics for people who run childcare businesses out of their home are even worse. You can't make money, you can't break even. Other countries have cracked this childcare puzzle. How do they do it? Two ways. As kids get older, centers need less staff for kids and the cost of care goes down. So other countries, they skip the infant stage altogether. They do this by offering paid family leave. Not only does this give parents time with their children, but it takes the least profitable part out of the childcare equation. Second, governments are pouring money into it. This lowers the cost for parents and makes sure the workers are paid a reasonable wage. And guess what? Every buck they spend multiplies down the road. A Federal Reserve study found that for every dollar invested in early childhood care yields extraordinary public returns. The U.S. federal government is putting in like $500 for each kid, compared to about $14,000 in other developed countries. The lack of investment creates a vicious cycle. Low pay and low profits makes it so there's a big shortage that trickles down to communities across America. So despite care costing tens of thousands of dollars, Half of Americans live in a childcare desert. It's a problem the residents of Warren, Minnesota know all too well. So how does a city administrator get involved with childcare? The city administrator gets involved with child care when it is a problem that cannot be solved by the private sector. What happened in Warren was there was not enough child care. That's Shannon Mortensen, the city administrator. In 2014, Warren was down to a handful of in-home child care providers, and Lil Sprouts, the only child care center left, was in trouble. 
the president said, well, 2 p.m. today, we're closing our doors and we're filing for bankruptcy. I went to my boss and I was very emotional. And I said, I, I think I have to quit. I have to leave. We have to move because we there's no daycare. And he said, well, what are we going to do? Because we can't not have a daycare in Warren. That's Phil Thompson. He's a business owner in Warren and sits on the city's economic development board. Is that how you kind of view daycare as like a, almost like a public good or a service? I do now, yep. What changed? When you learn about the mechanics of it and, the, and economically how it operates, you have to have affordable daycare. So I talked to a couple of friends of mine and we ponied up some money to keep the doors open. The donations gave some breathing room, but the big problem remained. The business model was unsustainable. The high school was calling us because they couldn't hire teachers because there's no daycare. The hospital, the nursing home, other businesses in town. So everyone looked to the city to come up with a solution. The city would build a state-of-the-art facility optimized for childcare with potential spots for over 100 kids. And the community would fund it with a half a percentage sales tax. So then we put it to the general public here in Warren, and it passed by 15 votes. If that was a commercial building at $3 million, the, the loan payments would be $160,000 to $180,000 a, a year. But it's not a commercial building. Little Sprouts, a nonprofit, will run the day-to-day -day operations, saving hundreds of thousand dollars a year. If we think back to that hypothetical childcare budget, the real estate expense is gone. Now they can start building a rainy day fund or lower prices. When you basically first found out that the center was going to close, did you ever think that this was going to be the result? No, I never, never gave that any thought, you know, <laughs> that we could build a facility like this. We're going to be able to attract employees to, to the community now that we couldn't before. I mean, they'll, they'll look at, it's not just a daycare, it's a nice daycare. Warren's model, the community taking over the real estate cost, is set to stabilize the town's childcare supply for years. It's fantastic. And the good news is everyone involved thinks it's repeatable. The bad news is that this doesn't tackle childcare's flawed business model. The first issue is wages. Wages are the bulk of the budget, and they're also super low because parents can't afford to pay more. Nationally, the median childcare wage is under $14 an hour, and only the biggest providers can give benefits like retirement and health insurance. We have this entire system that is just built on the backs of underpaid women and it went on for like years no one said anything or, well, i'm sure people were saying things but no one listened and now we gotta fix it yep i think that's very true i would say you're absolutely spot on the setup cratered during covid so the federal government steps in right they start dishing out extra cash to boost wages by three to four dollars an hour but the federal aid was temporary it expired Minnesota and a handful of other states made that support permanent, but it's still not enough. And no real estate expense ensures that this thing's gonna be sustainable, but even if they pass all of that savings on the families, it's still gonna be eight to $9,000 a year, a hefty 15% of people's budgets. And federal guidelines say that childcare should cost no more than 7% of a family's income. I'm bringing forward a proposal and we are, we're calling it the Great Start Affordability program. And what we're aiming to do is help bring down the amount of family budgetary spending um, to about 7% of annualized income. That's Representative Carly Katiza Watoon. She represents District 49, a suburb of Minneapolis. In 2023, the Minnesota legislature was able to make historic investments um, with over $1 billion directed to more accessible and affordable options for families. These programs were pretty varied. Everything from bureaucratic changes that streamlined the government to making the wage supports permanent. They added hundreds of millions of dollars to provide childcare subsidies for low-income families. For families in Minnesota, if they earn over $60,000 right now, they do not qualify for any of the existing supports that are out there. This legislation would change that and expand subsidies to families making up to $175,000 with the goal of tying childcare payments to 7% of a family's income. Those payments will go directly to the providers and then the families will see that payment reflected on their their monthly invoice. So it's it's helping keep money in the pockets of Minnesota families, but it is also at the same time stabilizing the income of our child care providers and early learning educators. On top of the subsidies, Minnesota passed 12 weeks of paid leave, potentially removing some of the most expensive care from the system. 
So what do you say to folks who claim the state can't afford this investment? Families already can't afford this. Um, we know that the return on investment in putting dollars into early childhood education is the best investment that you can make. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. If you have ideas for stories you want us to uncover next, please drop them in the comments below.